is my favorite yeah. kingdom anthem. Hallelujah. Can't you see the author <laughs> is now in heaven? <laughs> oh, and can you see him before the throne singing that? To majesty. Me? I lose it every time. Worship his majesty. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are worshipers. Yeah, very of true. true. Of the true and living God. I love Jesus, hallelujah. Amen. And I'm not ashamed of the gospel, of the kingdom Amen. of God. Hallelujah. Because the kingdom, the king, the one that we worship, the one that we sing praise, majesty on high, his yes. name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. How many love Jesus? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <sighs> I love the rains. But I don't like traveling in the rain. Lord gave you sunshine. Well, I asked the Lord, do you want me at the Jesse house on Shabbat, Lord? Then please withhold the rain. That was my prayer on Thursday. <laughs> and the Lord gave it. But Pastor Gill, why don't you like to drive in the rains? Because I don't like potholes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she had. And so here we are coming up. Waterman Avenue. Um, We're going to speed limit. I believe it's 50. Yeah. Boom. Our tire blows up. Thank God that my wife was driving because she knows how to handle. Bless her heart. I was right in the middle of telling her, look at the beautiful weather God gave us. <laughs> See, we get to drive in the sunshine and I don't have to worry about power. And then, boom, right in that moment, we had a blow up. And by the grace of God, we were able to boom, 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 all the way to a tire place on 40th that's owned by a brother that I know who's very much a brother in the Lord that I have known since childhood. Who opened? Who has the tire shop? Now it's already after 9.30. And I know that Emmanuel Israel is worshiping the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, so while you were here praising God, the devil's trying to keep this message from coming through. But brother, Eric, isn't that the way the devil works? That's right. <laughs> we are missionaries. And sometimes when we travel, we don't know what we're going to encounter. But by the grace of God, I am so thankful that um, my brother. Yes. Bless that. Lord said, call your brother. But Lord, what if he's not there? <laughs> Is this about to go over? Because no, I'm no, you're fine. Uh -huh. That's good. And by the grace of God, here comes my brother. Thank God for, for little brothers. <laughs> yeah. Because Pastor Gil doesn't know how to change a tire. Uh -oh. When it comes to changing tires, you make a good pastor. <laughs> I have always relied on other people doing the work. Mm -hmm. That's called the art of delegation. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> I was getting ready to call and delegate this message to our missionary, Rochelle, because <laughs> I'm stranded on the road. But by the grace of God, we got here. And so it is, this message the Lord put in my heart is tied to the parsha. Yisro, am I correct? Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. So the only parsha that's named after a non-Jew. Isn't that true? Who was Yisro? It was Moshe's father-in-law. From the reading of the Holy Scriptures, he wasn't an Israelite, he wasn't a Jew. Why would they name a parasha after a non-Jew? Matter of fact, he was the priest of Midian. That makes him a Midianite. Well, I don't know about that, but 
He had some advice. I think, I think he came to the light. We have a snapshot that Israel, like to the nations, they're about to receive the covenant. The covenant written by the finger of God, Israel at Mount Sinai, to hear the voice of God speaking. How many of us know that man shall not live by bread alone? But man lives by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. <clears throat> Yithro, Moshe's father-in-law, he noticed that Moshe is just not doing things right. Moshe needs to learn the art of delegation. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> You can't do it all. Yeah. Okay? Huh. I have no doubt in my mind that Moshe loved the Lord. I have no doubt in my mind that Moshe heard the voice of God speaking. I have no doubt in my mind that Moshe went up on that mountain to the exclusion of everyone else and what he received were the commandments of God. Now I've heard many, many things about the commandments of God. One of the things that I heard is that those commandments were nailed to the cross. So we as Christians don't have to do them. Now, I don't know if you've heard of that, but in my early days as a Christian, I was taught you just simply had to believe. There's nothing more to do. But what about the commandments? Those Ten Commandments that were received at Mount Sinai, where all of Israel stood before the mountain, they saw the smoke, they heard the thunderings, the blast of the shofar, you know, I was over here praying, and I heard a shofar <laughs> while you were worshiping. And I looked up and thought there was an angel blowing the shofar. What does all that mean? God. That's what the Bible says, that God descended upon the mountain. Majesty. Worship his majesty. Amen. You know who God is? Yeah. And what reverence must we give to our God who has descended from heaven and landed on top of Mount Sinai? He landed. I want to ride on that craft that he was riding. <laughs> this week I had the privilege of seeing beautiful pictures that is coming from Mars. And it looks like our Earth. My wife looks at that and says, that looks like Earth. Well, our government says that's coming from Mars. <laughs> that we actually landed on Mars, and there's a rover that's been taking pictures. pictures, and they are so vivid. And you look at that, and you would think, that's planet Earth. But that's a world in the heavens. How did we get there? We landed on another planet. How did God get here? From heaven, he landed. The people witnessed that. 
Majesty. as he descended. Majesty. Majesty. This is God descending upon the mountain. Because all of Israel had been gathered together, having come out of Egypt, to serve God on this mountain. Had that not been prophesied, mm -hmm. Moshe had been sent on a mission. So Moshe was a missionary at heart. Amen, Israel, we are a missionary organization. What I'm seeing here are missionaries. Mm -hmm. What I don't want, and what God did not put in my heart, was to try to manage 2.5 million people. That's why we don't strive to be a mega church. We don't want a thousand people sitting down every Sunday listening to a message and then going about their daily lives. Our ministry is about what? Making disciples that are going to get sent out two by two in every place where the Lord intends to go. Oh, you just got that out of Luke's gospel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He sent 70. Now, there are other versions of the Bible that put it at 72. Whether it was 70, whether it was 72. But I wonder who those 70 missionaries were. And do you know that he gave authority, kingdom authority, Amen. to those missionaries? And you know what they had to do? They had to go casting out the devil. Yeah. See, Jesus believed in demons. Because you have to believe that demons are truly there, that there are evil spirits, because you wouldn't be sending your missionaries out, giving them authority to do what? Cast out the devil. What's the devil have to do with it? I know the devil put that pothole there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know the devil tried to take us out. Because right in the middle of praising my God for sending this sunshine, <coughs> bam! How many of you know that the devil is real? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we have a missionary here to cast out demons. And God told me years ago, this would be a ministry of casting out demons. Now, when I went to tell that to my pastor, he says, well, that's a bunch of hoopla. There are no demons. Really? Where did Jesus say there were no demons? Why would Jesus tell you to cast out devil? Matter of fact, it's one of the signs that follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. We don't like demons. But they're all around. They're always up to no good. <laughs> they are the Philistines that we have to contend with. And if you don't cast out those devils, you're going to be just like the Hebrews as you go into the land. There are going to be thorns. Oh, come on, Pastor Gil. You can sell that to the ancient. But we live in the 21st century. We are landing on Mars. We are traveling the heavens. As a matter of fact, we're ready to build civilizations on other planets. We have evolved from those ancient times. So here's the question. Did God really come down from heaven and land on top of a mountain somewhere in the Middle East? Has anybody been to Mount Sinai these days? You have? I haven't, but people have. They've actually went up there? I would like to go up there. I don't have to. I just have to send a drone, and I can see it. <laughs> the Bible says they all heard God's voice. 
How can you hear God's voice without modern technology? How did it amplify? He doesn't need no microphone. When God speaks, somehow in some way, you're going to hear it. And we are to obey all that comes out of the mouth of God. Matter of fact, the people who stood at Mount Sinai made this statement. And Rochelle, what was that statement? All that the Lord says or commands, we will, we will do. Yep. All that the Lord commands, we will do. And the message today is about doing the commandments of God. And that's not popular in modern Christianity because people don't want to be accountable to a God they can't see, much less do what he says. So we just simply have to believe. And there's nothing more to do, and you get to go to heaven. Hmm. Oh, Pastor Gil, there we go again. Faith and works. You must be one of those James disciples. Faith without works is what? Dead. Dead. <clears throat> now, what did Jesus come to do? Give us eternal life. How many want eternal life? Amen. Amen. How many believe that there was actually a Mount Sinai Yes. experience that God oh, really yeah. did come down and that Moshe really did receive the commandments written with the finger of God on two tablets of stone that God said in the latter days I'll write these laws in their hearts and in their minds I'll put them <laughs> so it doesn't seem like God had it planned that the commandments would no longer be relevant to eternal life that eternal life has nothing to do with doing. It has everything to do with believing. And the Bible says that the demons believe and they tremble. Why do they tremble? Because demons don't do what God commands them to do. That's what makes them devils. And if that's what makes you a devil, then I wonder everybody that professes to know Jesus, but doesn't do what Jesus says do? Are those foolish devils that are making a mockery of God? Isn't that something? What a world we're living in. But didn't Paul prophesy that in the latter days, people are not going to want to hear the truth. So they're going to have teachers that are going to tickle their ears and tell them what they want to hear. Yeah. In many Israel, we're not those kind of teachers. We believe that there was the giving of the commandments at Mount Sinai. And all of Israel stood before the mountain. And all of Israel entered into covenant with God, majesty on high, king of kings, and the Lord of lords, because there's only one God. And there's only one Lord. And there's only one spirit. And there's only one calling and the Pope. One church. And the church is made up of the called out ones. The house of the saints. And who are the saints? What makes you and I a saint? Living in Christ. Was Moshe a saint? Was Joshua a saint? Was David a saint? Was Samuel a saint? What qualifies us for sainthood? But that we are holy to our God. Mm -hmm. Wow. Set apart. Set apart. Set apart. That's what's saying. You are what? Set apart to God. Israel was set apart to God. I know. Because in our text, we're going to be reading that God told his people Israel that you are 
a holy nation, a special treasure above all nations. If you do what? Keep my commandments. If you want to be God's holy people, there's no way you can do that by disobeying and not keeping the commandments of God. What is eternal life? Is it not the life of God? Jesus said, this is eternal life, that they might know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. And again, it was said that there would be a prophet like Moshe that God would send into the world, and Israel is to hear him. And that person that does not hear him and does not obey what he says to, what's going to happen to that person? Perish. They're going to perish. It's a sin not to do what Jesus said do. Amen. Okay? So let's go into the Holy Scriptures, which the Bible says is God's instruction. Amen. And I quote the great Apostle Paul who said this, all scriptures given by inspiration of God and is profitable for what? Doctrine. Doctrine. For instruction in righteousness. How many people know that he who is righteous practices righteousness? Amen. And if you want to learn what righteousness is, the then study the Holy Scriptures. But which yeah. ones, Pastor? All of them. All of them, from Genesis <laughs> through yeah. the very last chapter in the book of Revelation. Because this is all God's holy book. And this Amen. is God's holy Hallelujah. instruction. And anybody that wants to divide God's holy instruction is not coming from the spirit of God. There's another spirit, and it's called the spirit of what? Lawlessness. It is called the spirit of what? Antichrist. And if you think that the spirit of Antichrist is something yet future, look around you. It's right in your own churches. It's right in your own synagogues. It's right in your own mosque. It's everywhere. Right? Where are the leaven? Israel received the commandments of God. And what was Israel to do? Take these commandments and teach them to the world. Isn't that the work of a priest? Yeah. And isn't Israel a nation of priests? A royal priesthood. Amen. You read Amen. that in, to, in the parasha. And we as believers know that everything that is written is the word of God, that it is inspired by God, and it is infallible. So turn in your Holy Bibles this morning to the Christian side of the Holy Scriptures in the book of Matthew, chapter 19, and verse 16. Let's begin there. Are we ready? Chapter 19 of Matthew. And verse 16. <clears throat> and when everybody's there, say amen. amen. Now behold. Now behold. An American Christian came to him. <laughs> I'll just say American. An American came and said to him, Good teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And let everybody say this, eternal life. Eternal. How many want eternal life? Mm -hmm. And Jesus came to give us eternal life. Mm -hmm. And now Jesus is going to instruct this young man what he must do that he may have eternal life. And Jesus said, just believe. There's nothing more to do, just believe. Is that what your Bible says? No. What does it say? 
Well, first of all, why do you call me good? There's only one who is good, and that is God. How many of us know that God is good? Amen. So the one that came down from heaven and descended upon the mountain, he's good. So what he says is good. Matter of fact, everything that God does is good. Amen. God saw that the light was good. good. He saw that. This was good. And when he created man in his own image, and according to his likeness, he created the male and female, right? Because he's the creator. He's the designer. Tell that to all the idiots out there that think that what? <laughs> Tell that to all your wise fools who are teaching your children, my children, grandchildren, that they are not who they are. No, if you think you are, that's what you are. But biologically, that has nothing to do with it. If that's where our educational system is taking us, your tax dollars, my tax dollars, are paying for those fools to turn our children into what? It's. It's. That are neither male nor female. They call them binary. They call them binary, so they call them whatever. <laughs> yeah, they got a name for it. I'll give you a pronoun for it. <laughs> he is God. He is God. And there is no other God. Amen. And there's no other response that Jesus would give but to say, only one is good. What does that tell you about our Lord? He's good. He's good. Because it's all the glory goes to who? The Father. And God made them, male and female. And he what? Ordained them to come together in the holy matrimony. A man and a woman coming together to become one. Hallelujah. That's God. Now your government is saying that's not the way it is. Are we not living in the days of Antichrist? Yeah. So what did Jesus say to this young man? Because he came to the right one. He came to the right person. What must I do that I may have eternal life? So he said to them, why do you call me good? No one is good but one that is God. But if you want to enter into life, what kind of life is that? Eternal. eternal life. If you want to enter into eternal life, if you want to enter into it, do this. Keep the commandments. Keep the commandments. Amen. Keep the commandments. Isn't that what Jesus said? Yep. So when did that change? The Apostle Paul would later say these words. Circumcision is nothing. Uncircumcision is nothing. But keeping the commandments of God is what matters. It Makes me believe that Paul must have learned from Jesus because that's what Jesus taught. And we want to teach what Jesus taught because Amen. isn't he the master? Yeah. What did Jesus say? Keep the commandments. Isn't that what's written? So anybody that comes to you and tells you that keeping the commandments of God is not how you enter life is lying to you. Jesus. Now, of course, being a good American citizen that this young man was, he's going to ask the question, which was? Am I supposed to keep the ones in the Old Testament or the ones in the New Testament? Which 
Which ones, Rochelle? I'll say yes. yes. All of them. <laughs> you live by every word. Not some of the words. Not only the words you agree with God. God, I, I'll do this, but I won't do that. With every word. Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, that's how we live. If you want to enter life, obey God's commandments. Amen. Isn't that what's Ooh. being taught here? Yeah. And so, being a good American, which ones? Every. You know what Jesus did? Jesus must have believed that God really did descend on Mount Sinai and gave to Israel the Ten Commandments, because that's exactly what he begins to what? Quote. Quote. Yeah. What did Jesus say? Jesus said, you shall not murder. Where do we read that? The ten. In the Ten Commandments <laughs> that God gave to Israel at Mount Sinai, that most Christian preachers are saying, we don't have to live by that no more. Because he nailed that requirement to the cross. So what do we do with murder today? We let them go. Because our government says, we just defund the police. Go to Oakland. You see what's happening to our America? You see what's happening to our society? Where's the church in all of that? Because the demons are taking over this country. And if you don't think there are devils in high places, mm -hmm. study your Bible. Mm -hmm. We've been given authority over all the power of the devil, but we see the power of the devil everywhere we turn. We don't even have any power anymore to, to step in when our government's trying to transgender our children, our grandchildren. We have no rights. We've been stripped. God's people, where are you? Is the church still not in the world? From what I understand, the church is the pillar of truth on earth. The truth of God, we should be what? Beacons of light. Because you see, we are followers of Jesus and we are to imitate him. So when someone comes to you and asks you, what? Must I do that I may have eternal life? Any response that differs from how Jesus responded, would that be deviating from the truth? Keep the commandments. Which ones? The ones that were given that day when all of Israel stood before that holy mountain and said these words, all that God commands we will, Rochelle, do. I think that lines up with what Jesus is saying here. Keeping the commandments, another way to say it is do. The difference between a wise person and a fool is what you do with the commandments. What Jesus is teaching here is no different than what Moses taught Israel to do what God says do. He goes on and he says this. Keep the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. Do we still find that in those commandments that were given at Mount Sinai that day? Yeah. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Are we still talking about those commandments on Mount Sinai? Yes. Same one and only. Same one. Honor your father and your mother. But the school district says, forget what your mother and father tell you. If you think you're a girl, you're a girl. And they can't tell you to the contrary. And if they try to tell you 
To the contrary, we'll arrest them and put them in jail. Your tax dollars are funding the Antichrist. Welcome to America. I know, it's hard, huh? I don't want to be an American anymore. I want to go to Israel and be an Israel citizen. Because the closer I can get to Jerusalem, the closer I am to where it all began. How many want to be in the Holy Land? Amen. No, you don't. There's a war going on there. There's a lot happening here. Isn't it good to be in America? Land of the brave, home of the free. Yeah, which way does that go? Home of the brave, land of the free. I love this country, and I'm very patriotic. And I'll be the first to stand up and tell you. I love my country so much that I couldn't wait to enlist in the military because I'm so patriotic. Send me. And do you want to know something? My government took me in when I had nothing. Remember, Mom? You were there when you were sending me off. They celebrated it. We don't have to feed them. We don't have to clothe them. We don't, have to, we don't have to put up with them anymore. I'm left with only the clothes on my back. You want to know why? Because when you serve your government, you don't have to worry about nothing. The government will take care of you. Well, when you serve God as a missionary, you don't have to worry about anything. Because if you study how Jesus sent out his missionaries, he told them, don't even take a money bag. That's right. Don't take two. Of, you don't need it. Just do what the Lord says do. Go. Hallelujah. Ooh, ooh. And everywhere you go, in whatever house you happen to be hosted by, eat what's put in front of you because the labor is worthy of his wages. But Jesus said, I send you as lambs among wolves, the harvest is truly plentiful, but the laborers are what? Few. Because nobody wants to do the work. Why? As we see in our story here, after Jesus, is this the right term, elucidated the commandments in response to which ones? Honor your father and your mother. Let's just wrap it up. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But what if my neighbor happens to come from south of the border and he's here illegally? What if my neighbor happens to be a Palestinian kid from that side of the fence? What does this mean? You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Matter of fact, do you know that that is the royal law of Scripture? The royal law of Scripture is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love is the fulfillment of the law. Therefore, guess what? If you are really fulfilling the royal law of Scripture, and a royal law comes from a royal what? Monarch. We just sang majesty. Worship his majesty. Well, the majesty on high has given us commandments whereby we live in this world. It's called government. And if we are people who are and abide by the law of God, we would have no crime. People wouldn't be murdering each other. People wouldn't be doing what they're doing, right? We wouldn't have all these scandals. We wouldn't have what? The gossip columns. The fake news. We wouldn't have stealing. You want to know why stores are leaving cities? Because when a thief goes in to steal, a, you can't 
touch them. The government protects the criminal and makes you. It sounds to me like we're living in those times of lawlessness. Hello, church. It's all around us. The evidence of the devil is everywhere. We are lambs among the wolves. The problem is when those wolves come in the form of what? A pastor or a rabbi or a priest or some other spiritual what? Leader. Blind leaders of the blind. So what would the master say to this young man who is wanting to know how he could have eternal life. It was simple. Do the commandments. Keep the commandments. Which ones? The ones that God gave to who? To the children, to the children of Israel that day. It doesn't sound to me that Jesus changed that. So Jesus really must have believed the story that Moses and everything that happened on that mountain that day was true. Why would Jesus teach otherwise? Do you know where Jesus was getting these commandments out? The Torah. Oh, we don't like the Torah. What does Torah mean? Instruction. Why would God's instruction, how we are to live and interact as a society in this world, be offensive? Well, Paul has the answer. He just simply says, those who are carnally minded, it's impossible for them to please God because they're not subject to the law of God. It's impossible. So you see, when you have carnal people and you put the... Laws of God in front of carnal people, they're going to what? Hiss at you like a serpent. They're going to gnash their teeth at you. They're going to get mad at you. They're going to curse you and cast you off. We don't want to hear that. Isn't that what the prophets did? And you know what they did to the prophets? They killed them. And eventually they would kill Jesus. And today they want to kill you and me. Because anybody that represents God is an enemy to the world. That's right. And the world is all around you. Cold in. Isn't that why God would give us authority? To trample serpents and scorpions on the foot and over all the power of the enemy? Why? Because you're going to need it if you're going to follow Jesus. So, what was the response of the young man? He says to him, all these things I have kept from my youth, what do I still lack? What does he lack? Name the one commandment that Jesus didn't bring out. What's not listed here? The 10th commandment. Give it up every day. Thou shalt not covet. What is covetousness? It's coveting. I wonder why Jesus would not bring that one up. Well, if you read the 10th commandment, and can you put the 10th commandment up on the screen? Roger. You'll find it in Exodus. It happens to be where our Torah portion is at. The Tenth Commandment. Turn in your Bibles to Exodus. This is where we tie the Christian side to the Jewish side of the Bible so that we can find how these two go hand in hand. Right? I'm not an advocate of the Pope that severed the ties between... Well, that's another story. You didn't hear that from me. Okay? So, what does it say in chapter 19? Chapter 
awake. You are awake. Read the Ten Commandments. What does it say? <sighs> it says this, you shall not covet your neighbor's house. Tell that to all the people right now in San Diego that are trying to cheat the people that just lost everything in the floods and give them pennies on the dollar for their beautiful houses. Welcome to America, land of capitalism. We love to capitalize on people's what? Misfortunes. Misfortunes. That's what a capitalist does. And that's America. That's why they call us the fat cats. How do I know that? Because when I was in school, I studied U.S. history. How Christian colonists came to America and killed off the Indians and took their land and slaughtered them under the banner of what? You could say it. Christianity. It didn't stop there. The westward movement, they killed a lot of people. Matter of fact, right here in the San Bernardino, if you read the history here, you're going to find how much blood was shed to steal the land from the people. And yet, if they would have read the Tenth Commandment, they wouldn't have covered the land. They wouldn't have coveted the land. But you see, when we edit God's commandments, which one of those Native Americans was not a neighbor to those Puritans and to those Christians that came colonizing America? We don't like to hear that. But remember, we don't keep back the truth. We preach the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help us God. You see, this young man was so certain that he was right. He kept these commandments. So I should have eternal life because I do all these things. But what did Jesus say? If you want to be what? Perfect. You see, there's one thing you still lack. That one thing that you're not doing, that you should be doing, If you want to be perfect with God, do what God says do. Where in the holy, how do we justify taking what belongs to someone else and then justifying it as what? Manifest destiny. God gave us the right to take it and to take it by force. Shedding your blood, killing your women, killing your children, slaughtering you because we don't view you as a human being. You're a savage. You're a half person. Need I go more? Do you think they have eternal life? If you really listen to what Jesus said, he says, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And you see, if you love your neighbor as yourself, you'll do no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, it's the fulfillment of the Torah. The 10th commandment is simple. You shall not covet. Your neighbor's house, the one you're supposed to love, don't covet. You know what covet is? You have this desire to take what belongs to someone else. You become an Esau. You become a what? A Cain. Cain coveted everything that was his brother's. And what did he do? He committed murder, and then he took all of his property. You want to know why we kill people? To take their property. Don't believe me, study history. Is that not happening in the world today? Yeah. Nation will rise against nation. Neighbor against neighbor. Everybody is what? Wanting to take what belongs to someone else. Why do people go into a store and steal? Because they're coveting. They're breaking the 10th commandment. 
And when you break the Ten Commandments, you've broken everything else. Because you will steal. You will kill. You will do bad things. You will bear false witness. You'll tell lies to get what you want. And God help us if we're doing that, wearing a hat that says Christian, or a cross, or taking the name of the Lord in vain, praising Jesus on Sunday, and cheating people all week long. It's getting quiet in here. Covetousness. Another word for covetousness is what? Greed. Greed. God bless you. This is my cousin. <laughs> we are related. We're all cousins, aren't we? Straight out of Texas. Hallelujah. You all know Texas, right? That's where my folks come from. I guess nobody listens to the news. Texas is going to war against the United States yeah. as we speak. But that's another story. Whose land is it? You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. I guess that would rule out adultery. Because when you take what belongs to someone else, it's what? It's sin. breaking, the, it's sin. <coughs> Male servant, female servant, ox, donkey, nor anything that is your neighbor's. Don't take it. Do you know if we abided by the Tenth Commandment, we'd have peace? Yeah. Yeah. And we would have no fear that somebody's going to rob us, that somebody's going to kill us to take our car, take our property, or whatever. See, it's simple. If we only did what God commanded us to do, what He gave to humanity that day on that mountain, He gave us commandments, and He gave them for our good. Why? Because God is good. When did the commandments of God become bad? It's only bad to those who break them. So Jesus instructed this young man to keep those commandments that we read about in today's Parsha. So Jesus validated that there was the giving of the commandments on Mount Sinai that day. And when Israel stood before the mountain and they uttered these words, once again, Rochelle, all that the Lord commands, the Lord commands we will do. do. Because in the doing, is that's where the real evidence of your faith rests. Not in what you say, but what you do. Ain't that amazing? Back to Matthew chapter 19. So now that Jesus has laid this out, and the young man says, once again, all these things I have kept from my youth, what do I still lack? Good question. I wonder... And I challenge you this week, go to Jesus and ask him the same question. Lord, what do I still lack? And Jesus said to him, if you want to be perfect, how many want to be perfect? See, we should all be striving for perfection. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Because you see, when God came down on that mountain, the Israelites trembled. Oh, yeah. See, when you're in the presence of God, wow. Mm. 
to such a degree that they told Moses, you go up there, and whatever God says, we will hear it and do it. And God lamented, oh, if they had such a heart. Because you see, it would be good if we really did what God said do. But we're striving for perfection. That's called holiness. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God simply means that what you were yesterday is not what you will be tomorrow. That's sanctification, and it's a progression that goes from, from faith to faith. We are being transformed into the same image that we were originally created in from faith to faith. So your faith should be evidenced by the transformation that is going on in your daily lives. So murderers are not murderers anymore. And thieves are not thieves anymore. Liars don't lie anymore. You know what that's called? It's called repentance. Yeah. Which Jesus said, unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. I guess Jesus really took the commandments of God seriously. And Jesus said, if you want to be perfect, go, go, and do what? Sell yourself. <sighs> it begs the question. I know that this young man was an American capitalist. Because everything he had belonged to someone else. How did he get it? Here's the thing. If you study history... You have two groups of people, the haves and the what? Yeah. Have nots. If you want a, me to take you on a tour of our city, you'll see all the have nots. The ones that have no home to sleep in. They're sleeping under bridges. They're, they're, they're doing what? They're cold. Every single one of those homeless people is your neighbor and mine. Hello? They're cold, hungry. And They're thirsty. cold, hungry, and they need. Thirsty. They need Jesus. Amen. And the way it's going to take missionaries who are going to go to these very people that other people don't want in their churches, because they don't want those stinky people in the churches. I know. You know, uh, I used to go to church and they had us go out there over two years ago. They told us that we're no longer to be mentioned in their church because they don't want them. They don't want them to come to the church. Yeah. I was a member of a big church in Colton that told us the same thing. When we used to go feed the homeless, you just keep those stinky people out there. Don't you bring them here. I thought this was the house of God. What did Jesus say to this young man? You lack one thing. You lack one thing. Go. Do what? Sell what you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Isn't that what Jesus taught his disciples? Don't lay up for yourself treasures on earth. Where moth and rust destroy, and where the government will take it through taxation. See, the government doesn't like me. I don't teach you not to pay your taxes. But I'll be the first to teach you how to avoid taxation. Churches are good at that. We don't pay taxes in churches. We have trillions of dollars in our church properties, but we don't pay one dollar in property tax. You imagine if all of that changed? You would actually wipe out the homeless problem. But are we not grasping this? What does the poor have to do with we having eternal life? What does it say? Go, sell what you have, give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and do what? 
uh-oh, it sounds like Jesus is calling this young man to follow him into the mission field. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've heard rumors that you send us to places where we don't want to go. You might send us to those mean streets of San Bernardino, where all those mean sinners are. Remember, the, lab the laborers are few. What does it take to be a missionary? Love. Love. If you truly love your neighbors yourself, you'd be reaching those people. See, the answer is right here. But what did this young capitalist do in response to Jesus' instruction? What does it say, Rochelle? But the young man, when he heard it, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Great possessions. What are possessions, Rochelle? Does it include houses? Yes. Does it include land? Does it include cars? Yes. Does it include everything we have? Do you know that in America we are so consumer driven mm -hmm. that we will kill people in the Middle East if you stop the flow of merchandise coming to our stores? That's what we're doing right now. Those merchant ships are bringing all that merchandise that we spend our hard-earned dollars on so that we can pile it up in our houses and go buy more. But that's what makes our economy work, by buying more and more and more. And isn't that the very essence of covetousness, wanting more? Isn't that the very essence of greed? And if we really listened to what Jesus taught us and what he commanded us to do, we wouldn't do that? Pastor, why do you want to get together in small little groups like this so that we don't have big church mortgages? So we can take more of what we bring in and distribute it to who? Isn't that what Jesus said? I know, I'm a troublemaker. Before I was a pastor, missionary pastor, I was a benevolent director. You know what that means? Benevolence? My church gave me $25 budget a month to help the poor and needy. That's all they were going to give. Wow. That's like going up to a person who hasn't eaten in a week and you hand them a penny. Be blessed. The Lord bless you. Go your way. What is he going to do with a penny? Are we not reading what Jesus said to do? If you want to be perfect, you're going to have to get past yourself. Because it's selfishness is why we hoard what we have, why we will not share with the person next to us, why we will not be compassionate for the poor and the needy that we see all around right here in our own cities. America is in what? It is imploding as we speak. You have more poor people in our country today than in those days of the Great Depression. And how could that be when we have so many rich pastors, multi-billionaire pastors, flying in private jets, living a lifestyle that Jesus never advocated? And how can we call that godly? Wow. Well, Pastor, if you're going to preach like that, we don't want you in our church. Go. Good. Hmm. Then we'll go. Because people don't like this kind of preaching. But remember what, what Paul said, the Holy Spirit said in the latter days, they're going to they want their ears tickled. And according to their own lust, their own desires, they want preachers that are going to tell them what they want to hear. Those are the ones that are going to get the jobs in the churches. All the rest of us are going to be what? 
asleep on a couch in our private houses. No pun, Rochelle. What am I saying? Nothing that Jesus didn't say. Everybody sees it right in front of you. What does the word say? What does it say? What is written in your Bible, my Bible? Go. And he walked away sorrowful, not joyful. Sorrowful. You want to have eternal life? There's so much joy in eternal life. But the way you're going to experience the joy of eternal life is by doing what God says do. There's no joy in doing wrong. Keeping the commandments of God is what matters because that's what the Spirit of God will stir in your heart to love, to joy, to peace, to patience. Do you know that the scripture says that by patient continuance and doing good, God gives eternal life to those who do good? And let us not grow weary in well-doing, because in due season we shall reap. This man walked away sorrowful because his possessions possessed him. Imagine that. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Assuredly I say to you, it's hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Can you put a picture up on this screen? I have a senior moment. What's his name? Roger. Roger. <laughs> uh -oh. There's only one name that I don't forget in my old age. That's Jesus. <laughs> Brother. <laughs> I'm going to send you a picture that was sent to me from a friend in Rome hmm. about American Christians, the way they perceive us here. Are you ready? My email address? Uh, can ahead. I send it to you? Oh, it has to be your email? Yeah. Okay. I can pull it from there. Let me go ahead and do that. I was about to do that on the way over here, and we, we had a blowout. Can you give me that? Uh, C O D I N G, coding. C O D I N G. The number four. Four. And then four. At, four, four, oh, four today. Huh? Coding four. The number four today. T O D A Y at gmail.com. Okay, you should get this. I didn't know whether to take this as a compliment or an insult. Oh. Okay, it's on its way. I just got this last night. The time difference between Rome and the United States eight hours difference so when it's like 12 one o'clock in the morning you're communicating with my colleagues in in Rome mm -hmm. right. take a look at that picture yeah, he's, he's shirt one second yeah. he's got a shirt with the zoom audience you might not want to just share it with the zoom audience <laughs> this is America this is the way they perceive us oh that's the fat, the fat cat. Yeah. <laughs> you know the hamburgers and stuff? Yeah. In America, we have so much that we are lazy gluttons and we're getting fatter by the day. That's not a pretty picture. That is not a pretty picture. If that's the way they look at us. That's not American either. I mean, I well, I know that, I but America right. is just the resurrected Rome. If you study American history, they looked at Rome and they modeled after Rome. If you go to Washington, D.C., and then go to the Vatican, you see the same layout. Yeah. We are modeled after Rome. A republic. We are a republic. <laughs> Soon we will be a what? We will have an imperial dictator. But that's when we get to the tribulation period.
Why did this man walk away sorrowful? He should have been joyful. Because, number one, if he would have known who it was that was saying this to him, and if you really truly believe in Jesus, do what Jesus said, because you trust him, because you believe in him. And if the Lord tells you to do such and such a thing, do it because he is God. And why was he able to elucidate the commandments that were given at Mount Sinai, they were given to Israel through Moshe, right? Do you think Jesus was there that day? See, Jesus didn't teach anything contrary to what was given to Israel that day. It all lines up with the Torah. Because the Torah is the word of God. And it is part of all the scriptures. See, because the Torah came out of the mouth of God. And we live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And if you really believe that God came down on that big mountain somewhere out there in the Middle East and all of Israel heard it, right? Then why did he give us commandments? So that we can live in harmony as a community. And what a community is, is the unity of people all working together for the common good. Wow, Pastor Gil, you sound like a, a socialist, a communist. Well, that's only if you are a what? A person that doesn't want to share with anybody else. Think what these words mean. Go and do what Jesus says do. When his disciples heard, heard it, they were greatly astonished. Wow. And what did they say, Rochelle? Then who can be saved? Who then can be saved? What does selling your possessions have to do with salvation? What do works have to do with salvation? Remember? Free gift. Freely you have received, freely what? Give? If more Christians were givers, America wouldn't have a poverty problem. The challenge is to us as followers of Jesus. See, the disciples are like, wait a minute. Right? Who then can be saved? Can a Jew be saved? Yes. Can a Gentile be saved? Yes. See, what does it mean to follow Jesus? If you're going to call him majesty, king, lord, I'll say this. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and don't do what I command you? The only Christians that walk away sorrowful are the ones who won't do what God commands them to do. Why? Because we want to follow Jesus on our terms. I'll follow you, Lord, as long as I don't have to give up my what? My lifestyle. My comforts. I'll go to church on Sunday, but I'm not going to be a missionary because I, I might end up having to give up everything to do that. Who wants to do that? But notice what the Lord said. But Jesus looked at them and has said to them, with men, this is impossible. And anybody who wants to advocate that you can be saved without God, needs to read this. You and I are saved because Jesus makes it possible for us to be saved. And when we really believe and trust in him, there's where our salvation lies. 
Because you see, Jesus is going to enable us by his spirit to do the very things God commanded us to do. So any Christian who goes around saying, I have faith that can move mountains, but when it comes to keeping the commandments of God, I can't do it. There's a disconnect there. There's a contradiction there. Then Pastor Gill answered and said to him, See, we've left all and followed you. Therefore, what shall we have? And Rochelle laughs because she knows Pastor Gill. <laughs> okay. No comment. <laughs> I'll stay <with> <laughs> death. <laughs> See, I was called to be a missionary when I was 16 years old. Right at the moment when I got my focus on the American dream. I'm getting ready to join the military and go after my dream. Why, Lord God, are you getting in the way of my dream? Isn't that what Peter stood up and said? You see, following Jesus requires us to be ready to give up all. That's a called sacrifice. And those who have must be ready to give and to share with those who don't have. And I'm going to leave you with that. Because that is the very essence, the very spirit of love your neighbor as yourself. Not my commandments, God's commandments. Majesty, kingdom authority. What does all this have to do with eternal life? Everything. Because if you want to be joyful, do what the Lord says do. Because there's nothing but sorrow when we disobey God. So, my challenge to you this morning is simply go to Jesus and ask Him, what is the one thing that I still lack? And we'll pick it up. In the next Shabbat. Amen? Amen. Amen. That was not a flattering picture. <laughs> I will delete that. Well, I think he said it all. I don't think you need me to say much more, do you? <laughs> but I love the way the Lord works in a heart that is willing. That's all he really asks. He makes you willing. He, he enables you. <coughs> Like you said, he does it all. I remember a dear, um, I'm sure she's in heaven now, that was working with my folks, and they would go down to Elsinore about once a month to witness to the Jewish community down there. And she joked on the way down there when, one day, because um, it wasn't a lush place to live. And she said, you know, who would ever want to live here? <laughs> and by the end of that day, the Lord had so spoken to her heart. She couldn't wait to sell what she had here, move down there, and be a missionary the rest of her days in that community. God didn't make her do it. But as she opened her heart to Him, He, had, he, he gave her the desire. I love the way the Lord works. We don't need to fear anything. We don't give up a thing. <laughs> the more you give, the more He blesses. It's just... He's an awesome and amazing God. So don't go in fear to him with that question that Pastor Gills asked you to go with. Go with excitement. What's the Lord going to show me? How is he going to change me? Where are we headed, Lord? Let's have a mountaintop experience. I want to camp in that mountaintop. <laughs> and I don't want to come down. Yes. And what did your dad say when he was going to be a missionary? What do you tell the Lord? Oh, when he first was saved, <laughs> he was so in love with the Lord. I'll do anything. I'll go anywhere. I'll do whatever you want. Just don't send any of my own people because they're too hard. <laughs> 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 and of course, in no time, that's exactly where he was blessed to go mm -hmm. all these days. Yeah. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Let's close up.
Yehovah, you're a Lord, our provider, our awesome and amazing God, you are ineffable and indescribable. And we bow humbly before you. See our hearts, Lord. Take us to that place of sacrifice where we do willingly lay down our lives, allow you to conform us to your image. And Lord, whatever it is you would have us to do, may we not hesitate out of fear, but may we with glad hearts simply put ourselves, our whole commitment, into your loving hands that you can take, mold, and make, and use us. Lord, fill us up to pour us out. And to you be all the glory forever and ever. In the holy name of Yeshua, Jesus. Amen. And God loves to bless you. So we'll close with his blessing right out of the scriptures. Take it personal. The same way.